To install the ATC on my system, we'll start off by removing the Pwn CNC water-cooled spindle I have here. Uh, I just have the three different connections. There's two hoses use, utilizing the Cool Lance Cool connectors and also the main power cable coming in from the VFD. Uh, we'll be reusing the main power cable and the water lines. We'll just have to additionally with the ATC run in the air hoses and also the control cable for the ATC spindle and we'll see that as it goes. First thing I'm going to do to take the spindle off is remove the, the coolant lines, which the coolants, cool connectors are just like a regular air chuck on an air tool. Pull back on it, it releases, they come off. Same thing for the second one, comes back off. No loss of fluid anywhere. Now with those out of the way, we'll remove the main power cable from the spindle. Set that aside, like as I said, we'll be reusing all three of these. And now to remove the spindle, I'm gonna be using a four millimeter Allen wrench. This is the original Onefinity 80 millimeter spindle bracket, spindle clamp. So if you're using the original, the OEM spindle clamp from Onefinity, a four millimeter is what you need to do the removal. When you loosen them up, be sure to support the spindle and take it out. We're going to slide the spindle in. We have to align it a little bit and give room for the cool connectors with this connecting from here. So we have to give it some room to be able to move up and down. And a good starting point is with the PWN CNC logo right at the top of the clamp. And currently in this setup for this height, I've got my Z slider mounted onto the lowest setting for this height. If yours is mounted higher, you may need to change a little bit difference in heights, but the biggest thing to remember is that once it's all set up, we'll do final adjustments for the height. Now that the spindle is mounted to the carriage, we're going to start making all the connections on the top. We've got the tool change port, the air seal, de-dusting. That cleans out the chuck from any kind of dust when it's doing a tool change. The cool connectors, and we've got the main power cable coming from the spindle, and also the motor sense cable that sends the signals back and forth regarding uh, tool absent, tool present, all the different things as far as communicating the status of the spindle. I prefer to install all the smallest connections first, which will be the air hoses. First air hose I'm gonna put in is the blue one. That's marked with blue in your kit when you open it up. This is the tool changer. And these are all quick connect fittings. Simply just put the tool, put the hose in, push it in, make sure it's seated really good. Give it a tug, it's in there. The next hose is the green hose. This has a splitter on it. The splitter is going to run to the de-dusting port and also the air seal. And again, they'll just push in. Give them a little tug, make sure they're seated good. Now these connections, um, being a push to fit connection, they come apart very easily. Simply pull down on the little collar and the hose will just slide right out. Really easy, in and out. So the air hoses are connected. Next I'm going to hook up my water lines and these are a quick attach fitting just simply putting them on top give them a push they lock into place second one push lock into place the last two connections to make on the spindle are the main power cable and the motor signal cable these are both four pin connectors the larger one is the main power cable and the smaller one is the motor control cable both of these connections are keyed which only allows them to be connected in one particular position. So there's no way to connect them incorrectly. So that's the main power cable. And then we'll finish up with the motor signal cable. Screwing down the locking rings, just finger tight. It just keeps them together from vibrations. And that concludes all the connections on the spindle side of the ATC. Just to recap, we've got the main power cable, we've got the motor signal cable, two coolant lines. These are installed with the Coolant's cool connectors. And then we have the main 
tool changing air hose, single air hose which is blue running into the tool change port on the top, and then also the green hose that has a splitter running to the air seal and also the dedusting port. Now we'll start connecting all the cables to the pneumatics enclosure and we'll follow that up with the VFD. We'll work on the left hand side of the pneumatics enclosure to start with. We'll work from the back to the front just so it's the easiest to view. First cable we're going to connect is the motor sense cable which is the smaller one that was on top of the ATC spindle. The motor sense cable is purple. It's a four pin connector and again all these are keyed so there's only one way to put them in. And the nice thing is almost all of the connectors that are required for the ATC system have a different number of pins on the inside. So we connected the purple motor sense cable up. Next we'll do the control cable, which is a five pin cable. This cable runs from the pneumatics enclosure to the Maso to control the tool changes. So I've located my orange ATC control cable and we'll mount that one up also. And the next cable we're gonna install is the MTC cable. The MTC cable is wrapped with a yellow band in your installation kit. It's the manual tool change cable. It has a push button for releasing and mounting up new tools. It's a three pin GX connector. followed by the run cables, kind of a pink or magenta color band. It's a two pin GX connector. So that includes all the, all the cables running into the pneumatics enclosure. And now we'll deal with the hoses. There's two hoses, there's a blue one and a green one. The blue is the main one for the tool changer and is marked tool on the side of the pneumatics enclosure. And these are the same quick connect fittings as on top of the ATC. Just push it in, give it a tug, make sure it's in there good. Followed up by the dust port hose. Dust port hose is the green end. Slide that in. Now we have all the hoses connected onto the left side of the pneumatics enclosure. There's only one hose that needs to be installed on the right side and that's the main air supply. The main air line just connects onto the right side of the pneumatics enclosure and it's So now that's it for the pneumatics enclosure. For the Onefinity Elite running the Masso, we have the PWM cable which control the spindle and then the run cable goes up and connects to the pneumatics enclosure. First one we'll install will be the PWM cable. There's a six pin GX connector. Then the run cable that connects between the VFD and the pneumatics enclosure. So those are there. Lastly, I have my IoT plug installed on the VFD. I don't currently have it configured to do anything. My dust collector is on a remote switch because I use it for multiple tools in my shop. And then I've also relocated the auto manual switch on the side of the VFD to be mounted up to the Maso, along with moving the control face from the VFD also gets mounted up next to the Maso. Okay, we got our Maso set down to where we can work on it. We got a 3D printed piece that's going to fit into this area here, allowing us to put the header into it for the ATC inlet. We're going to feed the cables in through the hole provided. Slide our washer down over the cables. Followed by the lock nut. With everything all tightened up in there, we'll start feeding the cables into the Maso. And snap it in. So there's a nice clean install. Now we'll just attach the last of the cables to the back of the Maso, the ATC control cable. And there you go, that's complete. Now that we have the connectors on the back of the Maso, we'll start wiring up uh, everything on the inside. 
First thing I'll be doing is wiring up the ATC and then I'll be following that up with my tool setter. First wire that we're going to hook up is the jumpered red wire from the ATC inlet and that goes to a power. So showing here, there's two red cables coming in from the ATC inlet. One is red all the way solid and the other one is red on the end with jumpered white and yellow. We'll take the red one and put it into the, any power that you choose. There's an open one over here so we'll use this guy. The second wire to hook up is the ground wire. We can hook that up into any ground terminal on here. This block is all open. There's three open ground slots. The yellow wire goes to input seven, which is here on the end. These are a little bit larger ferrules. You have to open up that screw a fair bit to be able to get them in there. The white cable will be the next. The white one goes to input number eight. The next two wires to do are the non-jumpered red and also the green. The green goes to output number seven. The outputs are on the bottom of the board. And the red goes to output number eight. And that concludes the ATC inlet wiring. For my installation, I've got the VFD keypad control along with the auto manual switch attached, will be attached to the side of the masso. We'll get into the programming and configuration inside the masso now. Now that all the internal wiring is done, we just need to set up the software for the ATC. We'll go into F1 for the setup and we're going to be assigning inputs 7 and 8 and output number 7. Input 7 gets set up as tool change 1. Input 8 goes to tool change 2. And output 7 goes to the chuck clamp. And that's all that's needed for the ATC. That completes the installation of the ATC on the Onefinity Elite CNC system. We went through mounting of the hardware, the hoses, all the electrical connections inside the, inside the MASO, along with programming the MASO. Be sure to check out our Facebook page and also our forum page. There'll be links down in the description. And last but not least, don't just own your CNC, dominate it.